In alhamdulillah wa salat wa salam Allah wa rasulullah. We are continuing with our series, Keys to Living and Practicing Islam. And again, it's all about understanding that just because you say you believe in Allah is not enough. Allah put us here on this earth, surrounded us by all the, with all these wonderful things as a means of testing to see if we truly do believe in him. If we're going to live each day of our lives remembering him and trying to please him. Or are we going to give in to the fitna around us and give in to our desires and end up falling into sin? And in order to stay on the team of a law, you have to reaffirm your belief in him on a regular basis. And one of the ways that we reaffirm our belief in Allah is through the Fatiha. As Muslims, we are obligated to pray every day, five times a day. Unlike the other people of the book, we don't pray once a week. We don't pray three times a day. We pray five times a day at different times. And the times are spaced out as, as a way of, of, of making us remember Allah. And in every prayer that we make, we have to recite Al-Fatiha. In fact, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that there is no prayer without Al-Fatiha. And so a lot of people ask, well, why is it? What is it that makes Al-Fatiha so important? Well, this is what we're going to speak about today what makes it important we have to understand guys as a believing muslim our ultimate goal should be paradise and our lives in this world should be spent trying to reach that goal and the only way that we will reach this goal and at the same time maintain contentment in this life because again just because you're Muslim doesn't mean you're supposed to be unhappy either we can live in this world and enjoy the good things here Allah wants us to be content here he only says don't lose our focus which is that ultimate goal of paradise so we can reach paradise and at the same time maintain contentment here by being conscious of Allah. That consciousness of Allah is what keeps us balanced. That consciousness of Allah is what keeps us from deviating to the left or to the right. That consciousness of Allah is what keeps us firm. That consciousness of Allah makes us willing to do the things that he commands us to do and to do them on a regular basis. So again, guys, paradise is the goal. The way to achieve it or attain it is through consciousness of Allah and having the willingness to get there. And the Fatiha helps in this I want you to understand guys a lot of people when we learn the Fatiha we just learn how to recite it in Arabic how many of us actually ponder the English meaning unless you ponder the English interpretation of the meaning. The Fatiha serves no purpose to you. Well, let's look at the meaning of it. This prayer, this chapter of the Quran is recited in every Salat, in every Rakat. Without reciting it in each and every rakat, your prayer is not accepted. So what is it that we're actually saying when we recite it? Well, 
let's look at the first verses there. That chapter, that surah of the Quran, you begin by saying all praise and thanks are due to Allah, the Lord of mankind, the Lord of all that exists, the most gracious, the most merciful, the only owner of the day of judgment. That's what you were citing in the first verse of El Fatiha. When you're saying Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, A Rahman, A Rahim, Maliki Yomadin. That's what you're saying. You're saying all praise and thanks are due to Allah, the Lord of all that exists, <clears throat> the most gracious, the most merciful, the only owner <clears throat> of the day of judgment. When you recite those words, what are you doing? You are acknowledging, first of all, that Allah, he is the Lord of everything, of you, me, and everything that exists. You are also acknowledging that he is the most gracious, he is the most merciful, and only he can determine if you end up in paradise or hell. So you are beginning your prayers by praising and glorifying Allah. And this is why, remember when I taught you guys and we did the series on how to make supplication outside of prayer. Remember when we talked about how to make supplication? That when you are supplicating to Allah outside of the prayer, you start off by calling upon him, using his names and attributes. But remember when you asked if you could, should do that when you're making Salat, you don't have to. Because when you are reciting the Fatiha, look at what you're doing. You're calling upon Allah. You're praising him. You're glorifying him with El Fatiha. So that's why all you have to do when you're in sujood, all you have to do when you're bowing is make your supplication. You don't have to get Allah's attention with that other stuff because you have, you've already done that with El Fatiha. So you're starting your prayers off by glorifying and praising Allah. You are letting it be known that you know, you understand that Allah alone is who we worship. That he alone is who we ask for help for everything. So that means you are acknowledging that knowledge lies with him. Help lies with him and no one else. Nothing can harm you. Nothing can benefit you unless Allah allows it. You are saying that. And when you recite though the fifth verse of El Fatiha, this is reaffirming your trust in Allah. It's reaffirming your reliance upon Him. And once you reaffirm your trust in Allah, once you reaffirm your reliance upon Him, then that will cause you to live your life knowing that even though there are disappointments, Allah will never let you down. Even though you may be faced with a challenge, you can always turn to Allah and he will be there to pick you up in your darkest moment if you simply believe in him, if you simply trust in him. And all of that from the fifth verse of El Fatiha. And then in the next verse, the sixth verse, Ittina sirat al mustaqim. In that sixth verse, here you are declaring that the only way to achieve happiness is by sticking to the straight path. Sirat al mustaqim. And that there is no other straight path other than the one given to us by Allah. You're reaffirming that belief. 
You're reaffirming that belief every time you recite El Fatiha. That there is no other way. No one can, can introduce you to a way that's better than what Allah has introduced us to. So because of your belief in that, it will cause you to fulfill your obligations to Allah. You will do the deeds that he has made obligatory upon us, such as wearing the hijab, such as providing and maintaining your family, such as growing your beard. You will fulfill the obligations because you know that his way is the best. And also this will inspire you and motivate you to even do voluntary deeds. So you can get even more closer to Allah. So he can keep you on that straight path. He can give you the strength to not fall victim to your desires or shaitan. And then that next verse. Allah goes on to tell us in that next verse. Do not take the way of those who earned his anger, nor of those who went astray. He's talking about the people who came before us, the other nations that came before us. They were the chosen people before us, but they refused to obey Allah. They refused to listen to him. So they earned his anger and he replaced them and he replaced them with us. So when you recite Al-Fatiha, you are asking Allah to keep you on a straight path and to not allow you to deviate to the, to the path of others like the people before you us did. And Allah warns us, don't make the mistakes they made. Don't allow others to take the words of Allah and change them or twist them around like they did. Make sure that whatever good deeds that you do in life, you doing them to please Allah, not to earn the, uh, the uh, uh, pleasure of anyone or anything else. So when you ponder the meaning of those words and when you apply them to yourself, you will end up living your life holding firm to the true teachings of Islam. You will live each day of your life adhering to the example of our prophet and his companions. Despite the challenges, despite the trials, you will remain firm upon Sirat al-Mustaqim, the straight path. Ikhdina Sirat al-Mustaqim. That's what you're saying. Sirat al-Adina and Amta alayhim. You're saying, don't let me don't let me do as the people before me did. Don't let me be one of those who earn your anger as they did by deviating away. So again, guys, when you recite the Quran, uh, the Quran when you recite El Fatiha, I want you guys to ponder the words in English, the interpretation of the meaning in English. Because you will find El Fatiha a great key in li living Islam. You will get the strength to stand firm. You will get the strength to fulfill your obligations. This chapter of the Quran builds and reaffirms not only your belief in Allah, but your awareness of him, your consciousness of him. And by reciting it uh, over and over in every rakat, five or more times a day it's just reaffirming all of that so if we can live our lives complying with the meaning of el fatiha you will become a better stronger muslim and it will be hard for anyone for shaitan or anyone else to take you away from the straight path to take you away from your ultimate goal of paradise. So let's work on this. I want you guys to do the homework today. Today, I want you to look at the Fatiha, read the interpretation, the meaning in whatever language you speak, ponder those words, and then apply those words. And now it makes sense why 
There is no prayer, no salat without it. On that note, we'll stop right here for today. Tomorrow, I'm going to give you a quiz on this, and then we'll move on to another key to living and practicing Islam. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shalom la ilaha.